Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you're enjoying the Be The Difference podcast. If you are, I got a huge favor to ask. Go on to Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review for us. It helps us immensely with algorithms and growth because we grow completely by word of mouth organically. That's why there are no ads. Also, feel free to share this content with somebody you think might get value out of it. Last, if you don't know, I also do coaching to help people become the best version of themselves, starting with physical fitness, going all the way through mindset, sales, and leadership. If you're interested in learning more, there's going to be a link in the in the description of the podcast. You can schedule a time. It's a free assessment. All I'm going to do is have a conversation with you and see if I can even help you. I look forward to speaking to all of you. Continue to enjoy the podcast and remember to always be the difference. What's up, everybody? It's Greg with Delta, and this is the Be The Difference podcast. This podcast is all about making you a better person in your life and in your business with coaching on sales, leadership, mindset, marketing, everything under the sun when it comes to being an entrepreneur, and we bring on guest speakers. Today, I've got the honor and pleasure of welcoming Mr. Johnny Holston. Johnny, how you doing, big dog? Good, Greg. Thanks for having me, man. Love the intro. That got me ready to Just go through a brick up? wall. Yeah, you're, you're excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I like. I I feel. I feel like. But the intro was like it's got to like pump people up. So this brings the energy out of the beginning. We just hit the ground running, right? I love so, it. So for people that don't know who Johnny is, Johnny helps businesses write really clear website content on their homepage and landing page so that they can get more leads, make more sales, and use the content in all of their marketing. As a story brand certified marketing guide, Johnny has helped solopreneurs, small businesses, marketing teams, and even state colleges clarify their marketing messages with the story brand framework. Johnny lives in Phoenix, Arizona, where he lives with his wife, Lindy, one year old daughter, Presley, and two boxers that they have together. Johnny started South Mountain Messaging in 2021, where his mission is to help new people every month use a story brand marketing framework to increase sales and market more effectively. Man, I feel like I feel like uh, uh like the the law of attraction is real, bro. Because I am so deep into marketing and like doing like redoing my pages. I just spent a lot of time redoing my LinkedIn page and and uh, rebranding it for some of the things that I'm doing and looking at my Facebook profile and doing more Facebook organic marketing, which I never really did organic Facebook marketing. I was doing more like Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. But it's like every single time that I'll have a guest, I'm like, dude, this is right up my alley. This is what I'm looking for. And I'm sure Perfect. there's people out there that are going to be like, this is exactly what I'm looking for too. So let's jump I hope in. So, well, yeah, that's one of the benefits of having a podcast, right? You can you can really bring on people that are going to, going to, scratch the itches you need to scratch and align with what you're working on. Absolutely. But I mean, like for a lot of people that have been like, I think you've been scheduled for two, three weeks, probably. It's been, yeah. It might've been even longer than that. So yeah, you've been, yeah, you've you been scheduled for a while. Out, and yeah. I just recently started getting into this whole marketing branding like a week ago. So it's just like, it just aligns up perfectly. So <laughs> right. It was meant to be. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> the law of attraction yeah. is real. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. So um, let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Okay. Why, why is, why does anybody, um, really should be interested in doing warm market lead generation these days and, and with their social media? Well, I think a lot of it is people are so the, the human brain these days is just tuning everything out. Right. It's, it's like the second somebody engages with any content, we, we need to find a reason to keep scrolling, scrolling or move on or uh, cancel out of an ad. Like we're kind of wired these days to not um, want to engage with marketing content for obvious reasons. We don't want to be sold to. So I think that's why the being really intentional with your content, what you're saying, and then using like more of a warm audience is, is a way to get around that is what I would say. Yeah. The no like and trust, you know what? And this is actually, I got a question. What do you, what is you, what do you think about this? This is my opinion um i i feel like and i don't think it's dead yet but i feel like uh paid ads and paid advertising and um like buying leads through like funnels and stuff like that i feel like it's going the opposite direction now because it's getting so expensive to get clicks Mm -hmm. you're seeing 
the cost of leads through marketing organizations or mark digital marketing uh, uh, entities that are doing paid ads for you and, and generating leads, you're seeing that actually rise in cost. For instance, in our industry and in insurance, when I first started to get a, a final expense lead was 15 bucks. Now it's almost 40 for like mm. kind of average across the board. That's a 250% increase. And I only see the prices going up and people are actually buying them less often. So do you, do you see the same trends? I, I do. I, I'm not as much in the paid game as I am more on the messaging game, but I think you, you're onto something where the more that you trust paid ads to fill your pipeline, probably the more perfect, the more perfected your sales process has to be. And the more like of a sales savage you got to be. And hopefully everyone listening is anyways in the right, in all the right ways. Yeah. But I think it, 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 you immediately, if you're capturing leads from a paid campaign that some agency is doing for you, um, you're, you're kind of starting from a point, you either need to be leading that campaign with tons of value. That way, by the time you get on the phone with people, they feel like they know you already, mm -hmm. or you need to probably just have a really built out sales process. Cause why would you pay $40 per lead or more for a lead that like could slip through the cracks or that isn't a for sure close, or that isn't like drooling to do business with you. So I think there's a lot of reasons that paid stuff is starting to, to fall out because you could, uh, I mean, man, doing something like you're doing right now, you could spend, you could spend thousands on paid, paid campaigns, or you could build an audience like this and, um, maybe put some sweat equity into it and strategize and build a, a, an audience much larger than you're going to get for your ad spend. And more importantly, way higher quality as well. Um, I, I just see so many other ways people are starting to go with it. And I think that's encouraging because for a while it was kind of depressing for a lot of businesses. It'd be like, Oh, you want to start marketing? Sweet. You're going to spend at least, you know, at a minimum, several thousand a month, and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't work. And yeah, you're gonna have to wrap up period to get get at least nine oh, days. Yeah. Does that the, yeah. yes? Yeah. You you've been there, so yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I think maybe it's maybe if it's not going away, it's at least there's more options to, for people to pursue. So I'm with you there. Yeah, I, I've I've more leaned into um, warm market lead generation through social media interaction. Mm -hmm. Um, providing value, building a community that is based off of a no like and trust factor. And um, I never even realized, I mean, I guess I'm just late to the marketing game, but um, lately I've been doing a lot of Facebook group, like like setting up a Facebook group in order to create a community because mm -hmm. then you have a, a, a large community of people that you can help, right? And, and then it's also a captive audience that knows you, knows the value you bring, and then they're more likely to be like, hey, you know what? Like, I like your service or whatever. And so this can be done in almost any industry, no matter what. Um, and so just like when it comes to the when it comes to the advertising, like I'm saying, I'm just I'm leaning more towards that. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to really work LinkedIn. Uh, I've never got clients in any sales industry ever. Like I've never made any sales for anything off of LinkedIn. But I know that people do that, and they do that. I know very effectively. Link LinkedIn is a kind of a puzzle. It's a whole new beast. And one of my buddies and I were talking the other day, like, he's like, I can't even find my own post when I, when I post on LinkedIn. I want to go back to find it. It's, it takes like five minutes to go back and track it. So LinkedIn is a whole new, it, it's a different ball game. And yeah. I think for most people, it's like, just focus on one that you like and that works. Like face, if, if people are in a Facebook group and that's what you want to hammer on, that's great. Um, tinker with LinkedIn, but don't spread yourself thin trying to master all of them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I agree. So what are some strategies? Someone's listening to this and they're like, and they're, they're uh, a neophyte. They're even, you know, behind me and I'm pretty new. <laughs> and they're like, well, how do I get started? What yeah. do you, what, what are some strategies or tips or even like a pathway that they can walk to get them on the right track so that they can mm -hmm. start doing content or gener lead generation off of their platform in a relatively expedited time frame. I say, yeah, it's a great question. I say relatively yeah. with, with quotation marks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully this is, hopefully I can, I can provide something that's more, a little better than just relatively fast. I think the biggest thing most people struggle with is they marketing. There are a million ways to do it and there's a million ways that you can succeed doing it. 
And a, a mistake a lot of people make is they just don't know what to say in their marketing. They don't even know what to talk about. They um, feel like they want to sell all their products at once or they want to water down what they're saying so that everybody might be interested in it. And that just causes marketing to either never get off the ground or always fall flat and never uh, have the bite in the content that connects with people and that solves problems. So the first thing that I do is, and what I recommend for people is have a brainstorming session with yourself and, and really focus on who your audience is going to be. The, the analogy that I use and the framework I use with all my marketing and all my clients is the story brand framework. And this, basically it starts by nailing down who you're going to sell to and what do they want? Do they want, um, if it, if maybe it's in, in the in, uh, insurance industry, your character is somebody who wants a secured financial future for their family. That's what they want. You need to start with figuring out who you're talking to and what they want from there. You need to make a bunch of bullet points that are problems they're suffering with, uh, suffering from Th uh, two types of problems you need to outline. External problems, what's literally standing in the way of them. Maybe they just don't have an insurance policy, right? That might be the external problem. Mm -hmm. But the internal problem is how that external problem makes them feel. So they don't have a life insurance policy or, or a final expense policy or whatever they're searching for. Therefore, they feel anxious. They feel worried about their financial future. They feel paranoid that if something were to happen, their family wouldn't know what to do or wouldn't be able to cover expenses. If you can answer those two questions, who are you speaking to? What problems are they suffering from? From there, the rest of your marketing is just really geared towards educating on those problems, solving those problems, and then providing a call to action for them to engage with you to ultimately for you to help them solve that problem. Um, that is really the core of it. And if you can nail down those two talking points, it's going to be a lot easier to write things and say things and post things. It's going to, you have to act, exercise discipline because you're going to want to, you're going to want to make the character in your story, 20 different people, because you want to reach the most people possible. It's kind of the temptation with our marketing, yeah. but it's actually a fallacy. Cause when we do that, like there's a, there's a saying when you, when you, when you're speaking to everybody, you're speaking to nobody. And we can't really help the one character we're really supposed to be helping if we if we apply our message to bunches of people. Uh, it, the people we can help won't hear it. It won't resonate with them. Uh, so that is sort of the first step. Just get clear on who you're marketing to. Get clear on the problems that they're suffering from. And then from there, make some content and, and put some stuff out there that solves those problems or at least teaches them how you solve it or, or somebody else could um, – go about solving it for themselves. Ultimately we know it's, it never hurts to be generous. So if you can teach someone how to do something, they, and they, they have the financial means to hire you to do it anyways, they're, they're not going to do it themselves. So it, it always pays to just be super generous in that content. That's Perfect. where I would start. Yeah. Uh, I know that was kind of a, a long winded answer, but that's where I would start. Yeah. Provide, provide a ton of value on the front end. Absolutely. Um, when it comes to <clears throat> how their profile should look and things to say in their profile and, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I know for like LinkedIn, LinkedIn's a lot different because you can, your about section's massive. You can write a lot. I think it's like 2,500 words that you can put in your mm -hmm. about section. Whereas like a Facebook, it's like 50. It's like not, it's not many. So, when it comes to them doing whatever platform they choose, what are your recommendations for them to set up their plat their their profile appropriately that when people actually look at their profile, they're like, oh yeah, and it doesn't come off too salesy. It doesn't yep. like reek of desperation, but it's something something when they see it, they're like, Oh yeah, this this makes sense. I like this. And they're and they're yeah. with them. That's really good. I think um yeah, being paranoid paranoia and fear about looking too salesy can cripple a lot of people and make them stop even they don't even try to market or or make their brand online because of that yeah. so that's a very 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 important piece of this um leading with generosity and being clear about the problems you solve is the first step so like your bio for instance like we talked about i i use a framework for a one-liner sort of like an elevator pitch it goes problem solution result so start with a problem that you solve um, or that many people face. Next, 
talked about the solution. So with XYZ product or through consulting and through matching them with this policy, whatever the solution might be, then achieve the, then throw in the result that achieves. So I like that framework problem solution result because it, it helped you can do, a, you can do a small Instagram bio, but you could also expand it and really focus on longer, longer content about a problem, then longer about a solution and longer about a result on LinkedIn uh, or a longer about section. I would do that first. Um, make it clear, like, if you're going to have a personal brand, if you're going to have a personal, like a real estate agent or probably insurance agents, agent might fall in this category would be like, leverage your, use your personal network. So don't feel the, that means don't feel the pressure to constantly post every day about work and about your business. Post more just normal human content and then once every now and then there's a great place and there's an opportunity to educate your audience come in with something that's a little bit more uh more of a clear like work work uh post or business marketing type post that's completely fine because if people only see you online when you're trying to sell something there's nothing wrong with trying to sell something on your on your on your you know social media or or generate leads but if that's the only time your audience hears from you they'll probably get more annoyed so um, maybe start by beefing up your profile a little bit with a good ab- about section that follows problem solution result. Mm. Step two might be just port- post more in your regular everyday life. Yeah. And if you're a hustler, you're going to rope in some work anyways, right? Cause that's just your natural everyday life anyways. Um, that would, that would be my first two, two steps. Yeah. yeah um, for me, um, I feel like I'm a checklist guy, right? So if you're mm. like, Hey, I want you to do, you know, X amount of stories, X amount of posts a day. Hey, your stories, this is what you wanted the, the ratio to be. You want to have three stories where it's like telling them about you or right? like something in mm. your daily life, something like this, you know, uh, out of, out of, you know, 10 stories a day, you want three of them to be this, you want three of them to be something educational where you're providing some value. And it's just like no call to action, just value, boom, 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 boom. And then you want two to be some kind of inspiration, like a quote or something you read or something that like motivates somebody. And then your last two are going to be, Hey, there's a call to action. There's some kind of, kind of work thing, you know, that way it's the, your, your give, 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 take, take. Right. Um, does that make sense? Like that, yeah. like when I think about it, I try to think about it in those contexts and I'm, I use a lot. Well, I'm really kind of thinking about Gary V's, uh, marketing structure, like how he talks about and jab, jab, jab hook, um, of like provide value, provide value, provide value. And then, and then do an ask. Right. Yeah. I think that's great. My number one thing with checklists is I'm a checklist guy too. So yeah. I want one in front of me every morning before I start my day and I want them all checked off. My, um, where I've run into trouble is like making is is sometimes I'll give myself too intense of a checklist. And so I'll accomplish a ton of things, but I'll still feel like I fell short because I didn't finish the list. So for, as far as a checklist goes, like figure out what you can sustain yes, and then, you know, and then, and then do not stray from that. (laughs) That is the, that's my big thing is figure out what you can do. That's a good point. So somebody marry that list. Someone's starting off that's not used to posting daily or not used to like being engaged in social media. Now I'm going to talk about that, uh, the concept of social media here in a second, but somebody just starting off, they may not be accustomed to like doing X amount of stories or X amount of posts a day, a week, a month or whatever. So how would you recommend they start like, Hey, just start off with one post a week or one post uh, every three days or something like that in order to get them accustomed to it. Because once you get accustomed, mm-hmm. it becomes easier. It's more efficient. And then you can kind of add on from there and you're not, you're not overwhelmed when you're like, Oh shit, I got to do two posts. I'm not going to do, I don't need to do two posts a week. <laughs> yes. I agree. Yeah. A hundred percent. So I'll tell you what I do for myself. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm doing work for clients, but mm-hmm. Tuesday, is like my marketing day where I market for me because I got to, I got to, you know, generate leads for, for myself, not just others. And what I do is every Tuesday I have half the day set aside and that lit, I have a list of items to do. So for you and, um, or for any of the listeners, what I would do is, um, depending on how, depending on how active you are on social media for you, it may not be one day a week. Maybe it's like two hours a week on different days. Maybe it's Wednesday morning and Friday morning, Monday morning and Thursday morning. 
um, whenever you're feeling creative and like you, when you have a message you want to send, like block out some time to give it. There's two ways to do it. One, like block off a couple hours a week where you, no matter what happens, you will not cheat on that hour and bail on it unless there's a family emergency, <laughs> stick to it. Yeah. But set that cadence like rare enough that way it doesn't feel weird for your followers. So if you're not very active, what I would do is start by, I would actually start with a post that kind of like updates everybody on what you're doing and on a life update. And it's okay to say, Hey, here's what's going on in my life these days. I'm, my business is growing. I'm, you know, this, this like works going well. I've, I've really enjoyed helping um, solve these problems with this solution or achieving this result for so many people, like give like a little business update. Then of course you could follow up with like some, some life stuff or, um, other things, just kind of like reintroduce yourself through that way. That could be a good way to, to start it. And then from there, I think you're right. Like if, if, um, maybe if, if lean into what works for you. So like one of my best business mentors always told me like, go where the momentum is. So if you feel like you could, it, it's too hard to running a business is really hard. It's too hard to do it with, if you're pushing against the grain all the time. So if you feel like you would love to just open your phone and post a story every morning and you feel like that's sustainable because you get energy from talking through like FaceTime style, do that and then hold yourself to like one regular post a week. Negotiate with yourself a little bit. Give yourself freedom to be flexible on the things you enjoy and then focus on one or two other things that you won't stray from. So do like a reintroduction post and then from there, um, figure out what's sustainable. Do it for at least three months without changing anything and then maybe re re um, assess and, and see if you want to change that checklist at all yeah. and look at what's look at what's come from it you know see make sure it's working and then you know address things you need to from there that's a that's a key point is you want to be consistent um there's nothing worse than the person that comes i was like i'm gonna i'm starting a new business everybody this that the other's going on i'm gonna be doing all this and you do it for about a week and then you and then it's too much and then you just disappear because what happens is that when you fall off a little bit, you fall off almost all the way. And so you just friggin' disappear for like a week and you get your, your brain has to reboot, you know, yes. so it's that reboot process. And then finally you're like, man, it's been too long. I really got to get back to posting. You're like, shit. And then you feel, man, I got to make up for all this lost time. And this, I got to, and you go in way too hard and you, you create yeah. a cycle of like ups and downs and ups and downs. And it's not consistent. Nobody knows when you're going to be providing content. And then people are going to be like, oh yeah, they're just trying to do this thing, whatever. And, and it doesn't, it doesn't hit the mark. hundred percent. And if you've done that, if anyone listening has done that, where maybe last year you were killing the social media game, then you fell off, but you're still running your business. Maybe you got busy because business was thriving. And so you, slacked off on social media that's why the reintroduction or the update post is great you will it only builds your credibility if you can say hey uh, this is what i've been up to um looking forward to hopefully posting more like it's okay to even say those things in your post because then you start to train people to to know what to know it to open of yours and look at and view don't feel like you're starting just because you're reintroducing yourself on social media doesn't mean you're like starting a whole new business. Maybe you are, but so be mindful of that if that is the case, but you're so right. Like I've been running my business for a few years now. I don't use my Instagram for it, but every now and then I do want to post about something work related and I'll be like, Oh crap. I, th I like people are going to think I'm like starting a new business or something like that. <laughs> and so I have to rewire the messaging to sound like I didn't go anywhere. I'm not changing anything. I've always been doing this which actually will help you, your branding. Yeah. No, I, I love that. I love that. Um, now that I mentioned earlier, and I said I wanted to bring it back, is with social media, I heard this the other day, um, is that people misunderstand the social media person. There's two pieces. There's the social, and then there's the media. A lot of people focus on just the media and posting and content, but they don't focus on the engagement on the social mm -hmm. aspect, on the commenting on other posts, on the uh, sending DMs and reaching out to people and talking and having genuine conversations, which does help your algorithms. It helps you to create affinity with other people, especially people that might be potential clients. And uh, let's say Facebook, like Facebook sees that and they're going to see that you're active and you're social and they're going to push your content more because you're engaging with other people. Um, is that something that you also teach when you're talking with your, with your marketing company? 
Yeah, I don't do too much formal teaching on the like algor anything algorithm related because it, it it changes too much. But I think you're spot on in the fact that you might be bet you might be just as well off, probably better off, almost focusing more time and energy on the social side than the media side. If you're going to post a couple stories a week and one post a week, great. But every other day, maybe you're going to hop on and reply to stories for 20 minutes and comment on posts for for 20 minutes. Those things. Are, they feel more personal. Like when someone responds to your story, you smile, or when someone comments, it makes your day. Um, if you're making, more, you can probably make, you know, build build a brand better by doing more of that than just posting more media, and especially keep it fifty fifty on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something that I've been I've not been the best about in the past, uh, but I'm I'm working more towards now is even like liking and loving more posts and like sending a comment, just acknowledging like people like that. And then they're more likely mm -hmm. to be like, Oh man, that was really nice. And then then when they see my stuff, they may, they may comment or look at it more. It's a reciprocity. You're, you're gaining reciprocity with your followers. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, 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 we've been talking a lot about, about uh, business and, and about your, you know, advice. Ultimately, what would you say the biggest mistakes that people make when they're doing this? That pitfalls that, that people yeah. can avoid? The biggest marketing mistake um, and, and the mistake, I would say every single one of my clients in the history of the world that have come to me have all made the same mistake. They make their marketing about them. And they use it as an opportunity to say, um, here's a little bit of about me. Here's why I'm so great. I want to tell you about my products, me, me, me. When the reality is, um, much like the advice at the start of this podcast on how to focus on that character and the problems they solve, um, the, the way to view it is anytime you post marketing content, no matter where it is, even if it's your website or an email or your social media, the way to look at it is, all you are is spreading a message that will somehow help that character. So the story of your marketing is always about the customer, always. Never about uh, pushing information about your brand. So that's one mistake is people come to it from the angle of what do I need to tell the world and about my business. And that's not the way they should be thinking of it is what does my character need to hear right now to solve those problems? That's sort of the paradigm shift I always encourage people to think through. Um, that's that's really the first thing. I think a lot of people spend lots of time making content that's focused on them when if they created half the content that was just focused on their customer, they'd probably see better and better results. Um, and so everything I do is usually geared on helping clients reorient their marketing to focus on the customer, not focus on themselves. It's not easy, but that is the best thing anyone can, you know, can do for their marketing. It actually makes a lot of sense. Now I'm, I'm trying to think through all my marketing pieces. Like, do I talk a lot about myself? <laughs> well, the way, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a better breakdown of it, Greg, is like the, the framework I use, the story brand framework, it's the best place to start because it, it first of all, no marketing shame because everyone listening on this is probably thinking, oh crap, that's all I've been doing. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world, right? Um, yeah. We need to market and that it's so no shame. The, the next part is, the story brand framework, it's, it, the idea of it is your marketing tells a story. The main character in the story is your customer. And the guide in the story, like the Hey Mitch and the Hunger Games is a guide. Um, that's the example I like to use is your brand is the guide. So the guide is always the strongest character in a story. The customer is the hero. But in storytelling formula, the hero is usually the weakest character because they have to grow to find success. And the guide is the one that helps them do that. So that's a framework that I use for everything is you want to position your brand as the guide. Um, you can talk about yourself, but as long as it's through the avenue of I'm a guide to help the character, you'll do it a lot better. So it's, it's an art form, but, um, and, and, and it's hard. Even I hire someone to help me with my own marketing because when it's your own business, you want to make it about you no matter what uh, it's challenged. So, that's that's just something to consider for for listeners. I really like that that Hunger Games example and parody to to or comparison to the mm. marketing. Do you literally like tell stories? Do you have them like tell stories as like they're like as in an avatar who is their client 
telling a story about it in, in a marketing piece, like a, a which would be a general situation that that avatar is likely facing, and then having you know a guide that comes in, which would be their business that they mm -hmm. help. Um, great question. It could be done in a literal story format. Yeah. We I don't you typically do that. Uh, the way that it's done is the so the story brand framework has seven talking points. First one is the character. Second one is the problems the character faces. Third one is your business as the guide. Fourth one is the plan the guide gives the character. Fifth one is the call to action, how to start the plan. And then six and seven is the success your customers will experience if they work with you and the failure they'll experience if they might, if they don't work with you. So all I do is outline those seven talking points. We say, here's your seven talking points. Um, and then what's really cool is you don't even have to, it's the story brand framework, but you don't even have to write out a story to make it work. Um, because the way the human brain is, is connected is we will spend up to 30% of our time daydreaming and telling ourselves a story about maybe it's later today, or maybe it's, um, what life would look like if I had this insurance policy or how I would feel if I hired this real estate agent. Um, we will, the brain automatically tells stories. So the idea of the framework is to agitate what the character is looking for, name the problems they have, and then we just repeat those seven talking points in different places in our marketing. And the customer will enter into what's called narrative transportation. It's, it's like a very, it's like a, a, a literal, like scientific thing where if you if you agitate the desire of somebody, they will daydream about solving that desire. So that's really the whole idea behind it. And yes, your brand is the Hamish in the story because. Even though um, Haymitch in the Hunger Games, he's like, he's an alcoholic. He's a kooky guy. He's like wild. He's steady and strong and we trust him despite everything else he has going on. That's sort of how you want your brand to feel uh, in all of your marketing. You're not going to say the bad things about you, but you want to feel steady and strong, right? Yeah. Yeah. You want to be the example that they can follow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the reason Haymitch is the best guide example is because the we know in a good story, the best guides, they understand the pain of the cust of the character and they've, uh, they have authority to solve those problems. So for Hamish, he himself has been in the Hunger Games. He understands how Katniss feels and he won the Hunger Games. So he can actually coach Katniss to win it. And playing the guide is a mixture of empathy and authority. So that Hamish is a great example, but for your brand, it could be however you empathize with your customers and then follow after empathy, follow up with your authority to solve those problems. For me, it's, I understand how hard it is to know what to say in your marketing. I am certified in a framework that helps you do that. It's twofold. Um, and everybody can find those things. Even if you're in day one of your business, you can, you can play the guide. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that. I want you to give away, I don't want you to give away all your secrets. I want people to contact you and be like, dude, yeah. <laughs> dude, this is awesome. Uh, so if, if anybody yeah. listened to this and they're like, man, this is, this is exactly what I need in order to kind of launch my marketing strategy. What's the best place that they can reach you, Johnny? Yeah, for sure. Uh, best place to find me is South mountain messaging.com. Um, that's, uh, that's my website. You can also, speaking of LinkedIn, find me on LinkedIn, Johnny Holston, J, J O N N Y. Holston. Um, I guess you'll see my name on, on the, wherever you're watching this. So that's the best way to, to get a hold of me and have a, have a lot of ways I can help. I, yeah, I've helped people apply this framework in a one hour session or huge projects like uh, with the college we just did. So a lot of ways to apply this marketing framework to your business and works for everybody. So the, the best way to, if you don't even want to talk to me, read the book, building a story brand is, is a, the place to start. Building a story brand. I'm an avid reader. Oh, you'd love it, man. Let me send you. Let me send you one. You send me one. I got a whole bunch. I got a whole bunch. I will text you. I'll text you my address. I've been, I've actually I've sent out a lot of books, and I've been I've had a lot of people send me books too. Just doing the yeah. podcast, which has been a pretty book cool. Exchange. For sure. So, and I'll even if any uh, the first three people if I hear from anyone that came from your show, I'll send a book to the first three people who reach out as well. Even if you just ping me on LinkedIn, um, I'll do that too. So if that's helpful. Nice. Let's, let's connect on LinkedIn and, and then uh, I'll send you my address. Um, Perfect. The last question I saw my guests before we, we close up is uh, you have the opportunity to sit with, learn from, have a conversation with, break bread with three individuals, anyone in history, 
alive or deceased, who would that be and why? Three, three people, anyone, all time, anyone, all time. Um, you know, the first one, the first one would be Phil Knight, CEO of Nike or found creator of Nike. Uh, just one of the best American entrepreneurship stories in the history of the world. Um, would love to sit with him. That's super, uh, super thought provoking. Um, I think the next one would be Peyton Manning. I'm a huge Denver Broncos fan and I think I can learn a lot and also just geek out with Peyton Manning for some, for, for, (laughs) for an hour. And then, um, you know, the third one, oh gosh, I don't want to go political with this. I don't want to go too political with it. Um, (laughs) this is a tough one. I think I would like to, I will, I'll be honest. I don't necessarily fall on this guy's side of the aisle, but I would like to do, I'd like to have dinner with Barack Obama. I think that would round out, round out my top three. Nice. Nice. I like that's actually a good top three. <laughs> I was I was thinking I, I had an, in mind, I was like, I always try to guess I think who what like what kind of person that you're gonna that you're gonna uh-huh. or, or gonna are gonna suggest. And uh I had someone completely different in mind. I was, I was hey, thinking, well you know what in fairness, I would I would put I would probably do Trump instead of Obama too, just for the just for the sake of a, a experience and amazing dinner so i'm right in the you know right in the middle right in the middle between those two yeah yeah no it's awesome yeah. that's well, a great thank, question greg that's a good one johnny thank you so much for jumping on the podcast man i really appreciate the value that you provided this is amazing um and if, if you guys are watching this <clears throat> up to now obviously you got value do me a favor go reach out to johnny go connect with them and go see how he can help you with your business, especially if you're an entrepreneur, solopreneur, small business owner, whatever, in order to help you with your mar- marketing and your messaging. Because I'm telling you that the tide is turning away from paid advertising. It's going to get more expensive. I'm not going to say it's going to be gone, but um, really leaning into creating a brand for yourself where people will come to you and you can become a magnet on your social media platforms for people to come and find you and know, like, and trust you organically is starting to become more of a thing. So this is something you definitely want to invest in and work on. This has been the Be The Difference podcast. Um, uh, if you can, I ask a favor. So it's Johnny. You got any value from this? Go ahead and uh, share this with somebody. Share this content with somebody else that can get value, that can learn from it, that can grow from it, that can change their perspective. It takes you 60 seconds just to share, review, rate, subscribe, all this stuff, all the good things. But it means the world to both Johnny and I. This has been the Be The Difference podcast. 